It's been a week for the Sooners. We're watching a lot of our former players go through like Senior Bowl stuff and the East West Shrine game. Drapes dudes is cooking, folks. As well as some awards kind of was given out. We're starting to see some ratings from the past season. Man, a lot has been happening in Sooner Nation. So we're going to wrap up the entire week today on this Friday episode and really walk through what went down for Oklahoma. All the news and updates that you need to know because you're a Sooner fan and you're on this channel. So let's dive into what's going on. Before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thank y'all for pulling up to the channel. Y'all know what it is. We're going to dive into the latest news and updates in Sooner Nation. This channel, of course, is always going to have a, a slight lean towards Sooner content. But we're going to throw some college football content in there as well. If you want recruiting updates, as each recruit come down, check out the Sooner or Later Sports Show. That is all OU stuff. That's my other channel. We're going to grow that one like we did this one and make this one the main one for all college football news. So with that being said, Let's dive into what's going down in Oklahoma. First and foremost, we got to talk about 247's preseason All-American team, right? So Brad Crawford threw together a list, put together who's all All-Americans. And of course, we got a Sooner on that list. Not as many as we should have, but we're not going to argue that. We don't have any on the offensive side. Wild, right? But kind of expected the disrespect in that capacity. But we're not going to be tripping because we'll show out on that side of the ball. But defensively, we had the man himself on there, the guy that didn't even get mentioned in the Buckets Awards. We had Danny Stutzman. He's on this list with Barrett Carter for next season, as well as Harold Perkins at the linebacker spot. We all know that Danny Stutzman is expected to have yet again another boss season. Coming in as a season vet, he'll definitely be going to the pros after this one. The expectation is that Stutzman's going to cook this coming season and we all expect that you know we chatted with kendall dolby on wednesday night please go check out that video i'll have it at the end of this to where you can click right into it and hear us chop it up with him it was a fun conversation and he talked about it how big it was bringing stutzman back as well as bowman and contrary to, to the belief i know that there was like a big war between insiders and all that stuff they all thought he was gone Right, like that confirms every story that we've heard, even from the insiders that broke the news early that Stutzman was trying to decide. Like he had packed his stuff up, locker was empty, dude bounced. And then he decided, you know what, I'm gonna come back. That tells you how good that NIL is working, right? Yeah, we're bringing back veterans. You want veteran presence when it comes to going to the SEC. And the good thing is, is the defense is gonna be the most veteran portion of this team. That's all that's important. As long as the defense is there, We'll figure out the offense. I ain't got no concerns on that side of the ball. But Stutzman hits that All-American team. Huge news for Oklahoma because it just solidifies what Brent Venables is doing on this team that he got Stutzman up there at that level. Hop in the comments. Let me know how you feel about that. Let's jump into a couple of other ones. Like I like how our the youth on this team is. One of the things you've heard me, if you've been following me for a while, I've preached it all about this past season, is we play with a lot of young players, right? We had the highest amount of snaps from players that were freshmen or red shirt freshmen or sophomores, like first two years in college football. We had the most of anybody that was in the top 25, right? We played a ton of young dudes. Fortunately, at moments, you can tell we were playing a bunch of young dudes because of some of the actions by them, but we were playing a lot of young guys which tells me two things. One, Venables and staff really liked the dudes that they recruited. <laughs> like, cause they were playing their guys. They weren't playing the guys that were a part of the last regime. They're playing their own guys, which means they really like their recruits. Number two, the recruits are actually pretty darn good. Cause this team finished in the top 30, top 40 in some metrics and top 15 in other metrics as far as defensive efficiency rating. Like, they were up there. So, because the numbers were so nice and lovely, you start to see that. Well, PFL put out their grades. Now, let me, let me put the disclaimer out there. PF, PFF is not perfect, but it's a great tool in your toolbox. It's not the toolbox. Remember, it's like a hammer or a wrench or a screwdriver. It ain't the actual box that holds all the tools. So you leverage this information to better understand and grasp what's going on. But Looking at a few of these grades real quick, running back wise, out of highest graded freshman running backs, Gavin Southchuck finished number seven on there, 73.7. And y'all know how uh, excited we all were about 
Gavin Southchuck coming into this season. Um, he was dealing with some, you know, hamstring in, in, you know issues, so he wasn't at 100% pristine. But he still finished the season with 744 yards and nine touchdowns. Beauty of that is means he has a great chance to have a breakout season, right? As long as he is healthy, and it sounds like he is in, in these w- winter workouts, he's pretty healthy. So he's graded number seven on there. Freshman wide receivers, highest graded there. Nick Anderson is number nine on that list, just above Zachariah Branch. Branch is a beast. Nick Anderson out there did his thing as well. As a freshman, this man finished with 798 yards, 10 touchdowns on 38 receptions, averaging like 21 yards a catch. Number dropped on the average. He was the top freshman. I think he moved to second after the bowl game. But yeah, Nick, if you don't include the bowl game, yeah, Nick had a season. Something that, you know, we were all worried about. Remember, we were strongest on the running back room and we were a little, you know, we we're bearish on the um the uh, the wide receiver room when we were bullish on the running back room. So we thought the running back room was gonna be elite, right? Wide receivers like, oh, we need help. Andrew Anthony showed out as a re- as a transfer. Nick Anderson put up those numbers. They killed it. And those two also put up some additional statistics right there, right? Gavin Selchuk led all freshman running backs in touchdowns. He had nine, almost had 10. I was hoping he finished with 10, but he finished with nine. That's a huge number for him, especially going into next season. And then Nick Anderson had 22 receptions of 15 plus yards last year. Led all freshman players. Told y'all, the young players, especially on the offensive side, man, we did it. Defensively did well. As also, we had a few veterans to help with those young players, but we played a lot of young dudes, and I'm very excited about their development and where they're going to end up next season. Hop in the comments. Let your boy know your thoughts. How you feeling about uh, the youth movement here at Oklahoma? You know it's good, right? All right, lastly, let's wrap things up with a bow on it. We've got... Junior weekend coming in, another ju- elite junior day coming this this coming weekend. And Oklahoma had uh, won last weekend. It was a big deal. A lot of players came through. We got a lot of praise. And, of course, I was excited about what we were putting down. Now, this is what's cool about it, though. So Oklahoma's got some pretty good players coming through. I heard the list is very extensive. I haven't pulled uh, me and my boy PG, the PG show. Go check out his channel. I know he's been writing them down and he's been putting in notes of the players that he knows is going to pull up. There's a lot more to go in there. But we got confirmation of one player that I want to make mention of because at the tight end spot, we're really working hard. Actually, a couple guys. One, you got Caden Knighton, the running back out of Winniewood, Oklahoma. He was committed to Vanderbilt. He just decommitted, got an Oklahoma offer, and then said that he was coming to Oklahoma to visit this weekend. Pretty big deal. He's one of the most explosive players in the state of Oklahoma, and he's one of those dudes that he'll shock you when you see him actually play. The tape uh, honestly doesn't do him justice. He's, he's, he's that elite. But another player that really jumped out to me that jumped on this list is going to be Lincoln Cure. Now, Lincoln Cure is another tight end that Oklahoma is going after. Consensus four-star, top 40 player in the country. He is out of Kansas. I think Goodland, Texas. Yes, Goodland, Texas. I mean, so Kansas. Goodland, Kansas. Clean that up. He's out of Goodland, Kansas. And the big thing about Lincoln Cure is another. he's another tight end that Oklahoma is going after. Right now, he's a heavy lean towards Kansas State. But it's been confirmed that he's going to uh, pull up. Uh, I thought Parker Thune posted a tweet on it. And he's another player that Oklahoma wants to get him and pair him up with Nate Roberts, the the tight end out of Washington, Oklahoma, who is a big lean towards Ohio State. I think there's even a crystal ball out there for him right now. But the team's working on him because his brother Jake is a Sooner right now, right? And then Nate came and visited last weekend during that junior day. So if you can get both or at least one of them, Oklahoma's cooking with some grease at that point, right? They'll be able to do some special stuff long term, especially at that position. I know y'all really love JJF and what he's doing at tight end. I'm going to tell y'all, I don't think it's on him. Personally, I don't think it's on him. But the good thing is, is Oklahoma is making moves for guys that they need and they would like to have to build up what this team's going to look like. So it's going to be a big list coming out. 
for the junior day. We'll try to get that together and get something to you all this weekend. Hop in the comments. Let your boy know your thoughts. How y'all feeling about what Oklahoma's doing in the recruiting trail, as well as on uh, these award, these these numbers, these these lists, right? We're starting to show up on a whole bunch of lists because that tells you that Oklahoma's going to walk into the SEC with a little bit of a vengeance. If you made it this far, you like the content, please hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. We'd love to have you join this family of college football fans. Talking a lot of OU football. We're mixing in college football in general. We're going to have a blast doing it because, you know, that's what we do here. YouTube says check out one of these videos. I highly recommend it because I'm curating it for you. And check out the Sooner or Later Sports Show. Link is, of course, in the description below. Love for you to come over there and check out the recruiting information there. We'll chop it up soon. Peace.